All right. Let's see. I think we are live now. Yeah, maybe. There we go. We're live. All right. Let me do a quick share on here. Go. That's it. We're ready to rock and roll. Light this thing up. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. All the way from Texas. All right. That's right. But formerly a New Yorker. You're always a New Yorker, I guess. Formerly a Salvadorian. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you want to go deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always going to the core level, you know? That's it. One more share here. Yeah, it's actually working pretty good tonight. Let's see. Let's get this into entrepreneurs. Give everyone a chance to hang out with us. There we go. There we go. One more share here, and we are going for it. Dr. B just jumped on. Oh, Stacy's on. I missed Stacy's event. I'm upset. <laughs> but you can't make them all. All right. Let's right. get going here. Let's get Beautiful. going here. All right. Let's go to the comment section here. Okay. I can see the comments. Guys, feel free to comment as uh, we go. If you got any uh, questions or want to learn anything or want to just tell us that we're awesome, you can comment it right there. Like, love, all that good stuff. We always appreciate right. it. So uh, let's move this over here a little bit. I'm a little bit soaking wet because I just got back from my ride and the sky opened. We got thunderstorms going on here, so hopefully we don't lose uh, signal or power with the thunderstorms. But all right, so welcome to the show, Eric Sanchez, um, all the way in from Texas, but he's actually in Massachusetts at the moment. And, yes, sir. Uh, he came into New York to see me personally uh, this week, <laughs> and uh, we met up on uh, was that Friday? I guess we met up. We had lunch and hung out, and um, we said, you know what, i got to get you on the show, because uh, your story is pretty awesome. So, came here yeah. from El Salvador 13 years ago, is it now? Yeah, 13 years ago. And uh, that was a crazy story, and then I built this business up of uh, solar energy, and um, also a call center that you got for marketing purposes, and uh, it's pretty wild. So, um, I mentioned it today in my message and the other night that uh, what you went through to get here for the American Dream... It's pretty, pretty intense, pretty crazy. And all of us that have been here and were born here don't take advantage of the American dream, the land of opportunity. So a lot of people are sleeping on opportunity to see what you went through just to get here to the land of opportunity. And the opportunity you're taking advantage of is just amazing. So let's start with the beginning of your story. What, what made you want to come here and tell us how you got here? Because that's a pretty crazy story. Yeah, brother. Absolutely, man. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. You know, I, I didn't yeah. know it was going to be this sooner. You know, you were telling me about being in your show and, Sid. you know, somehow I'm here now. now. never, man. Let's go sink a swim. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, my story is just, uh, I believe a lot of people are here, especially immigrants. We take uh, the opportunity of being here, you know, not for granted. So, you know, uh, I just, at the beginning, I, I didn't know how good we had it until until I was here, you know, like, mm. like we got it good out here. And my journey is different than most people. And what I had to go through is something that I don't want people to have to go through that again. That's why I started my call center. So if we go back uh, 13 years ago, as I mentioned to you, I received a random phone call from my dad. And he said, hey, you're going to the United States. Uh, so you're leaving literally tomorrow. So my decision was not not even my decision. Oh, wow. You know, the decision that was made was not even my decision. Wow. It was a decision made by my parents. You know, so How old I had to. Time? Uh, I was 15 years 15 old, years old. you know, and I just received a random call. Um, so at the time, you know, I was uh, not going in the best direction, especially for a teenager, you know. So I was really uh, drinking, smoking. I was doing a lot of the things that I wasn't supposed to be doing at that age, you know. Mm. So at 15, I was 25 already, okay. you know, like I was yeah. doing things that people at that age are doing. Uh, so that the, was uh, one of the things. What's the culture in El Salvador? Like, what'd you leave behind? Is it, I mean, is it it's depressed? It's a city? It's it's what? what just it's like quick... everywhere else, you know, like you, you get a lot of amazing things here, 
and as much as, as you also don't, you know. So my life was amazing out there. I had everything that I needed. I had com I had access to computer at a very young age. Uh, I was a pretty well taken care of kid, you know. Okay. Uh, I never had anything missing. Uh, I had a great life, and my mother my mother decided to actually move out here three years before I did. So that's really how it all happened, you okay. know. So having my mom leaving uh, was a huge uh, break break through moment for me as a young uh, kid you know 12 years old having your mom leave That's for a better opportunity crazy. for yeah. kids yeah so you know i used to tell her i wish that you don't have to go and mm. that we can just continue eating bread and and beans and mm. the little that we have is enough mm. uh if you can stay you know but she had to do what she had to do and and that's what ended up happening you know so yeah. um i think life in el salvador or any other country is beautiful you know, just like everywhere else, you know, you're going to get a little bit of the good and you're going to get a little bit of the bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, so that's pretty wild. Uh, a 12 years old mom yeah. leaving to come to America. Just, I mean, that's for the opportunity. Uh, it's, it's wild. You know, we take it for granted, those of us that have had our families born here, together here, never had any, you know, any anyone leave us like that to go to another country. I mean, it's scary times. Ago. For me to go to yeah. El Salvador and not know the language, not know anything, I mean, definitely uh at, at my age now it's kind of wild to think about doing it at uh 15 is right yeah impressive. man so so tell us the story because you know, that was pretty that journey is pretty pretty crazy <laughs> absolutely man so thankfully you know sacrifices it, it, it always pays off you know so my mother made the decision for her to arrive to the leno opportunity and three years later she was able to bring me with her right so um i went through like crazy shit. Uh, I, I I told you, I'm not I'm not a shame of my past. Um, you know, I, I want to actually change people' mindset about the situation. I came here completely illegally. I was chased by helicopters. I went through uh, the river more than seven times. Uh, I'm not supposed to be here sitting right now talking to you, but I am because I did the work and I'll continue to do it all the time. So fast forward 13 years i'm a citizen of the united states you awesome. know i i am living the american dream i'm doing all the things i'm paying my taxes i'm being someone that people uh look up to now so for people to say that illegals come here to take they're wrong anybody here can come to take it's only the mentality of the individual that actually comes here right so for me i came here right at around the age of 15 turning 16 so i had the opportunity to go to high school to go to college you know i had the opportunity for me to get educated and i very quickly realized and learned that the system was fucked up mm -hmm. i realized that uh, what they were teaching me was something that was going to keep me uh, at levels that i actually felt like they were limiting my ability of what i can do as a creator you know just as a positive person so I would go to school and I would question all these things, you know, and that's really the curiosity that I was telling you about that led me into entrepreneurship to always keep my mind open to possibilities that life can be better, that mm -hmm. I get to create me, my own reality based on what I think, based on what I feel and based on the actions that I take every day, I get to do this. And I started writing affirmations at a really young age about saying the things that I wanted to become. You know, and little by little, life has started giving me the opportunity to be at the right time, at the right place, with the right people. And it's all because I put the work and I believe I'm lucky. You know, the reason why I say I'm lucky is because I create my own luck. It's lead under correct knowledge. So once I read that book, Think and Grow Rich, and it gave me all the understanding of, of you know, how to create, you know, anything that you want. I started practicing that and, you know, I've been putting the same concept ever since for absolutely anything that I want when it comes to business, uh, relationships, friendship, absolutely anything. I, I literally go through that process, you know, so, uh, and so I, I summarize, I summarize my story in a really short, <laughs> you know, uh, moment, but you know, I went through definitely a lot of stuff and, um, I'm here and I don't want anyone to feel bad about it because I don't, you know, yeah. it is what it is. No, the and story of, we do uh, what we do. It just, it just shows you what's possible when you take control of your life. Um, so many people don't realize that we are in control of our happiness. We are in control of our sadness. We are in control of our, our future. We are in control of our finances. We are in control of everything in our life. 
life happens for us doesn't happen to us so we got to make that decision uh, i was talking to a friend the other day and um she's going through a divorce she's fighting with her ex and i said why are you letting him steal your joy i love that line it's a joel osteen line why do you let people steal your joy you are in charge of your own joy you're in charge of your own happiness if you're in a good mood and someone comes up and and comes at you you let them make you unhappy if you say no no not today and dismiss them and you keep your happiness you're in control of that and it's a whole mindset that you really i mean it's, it's a struggle listen we all get triggered right someone comes at you and you're like you want to punch them right but you know Take a yeah. deep breath, right, and let it roll off. I'm not not today. You're not losing my joy. I'm in a good mood. Sunshine, and I'm in a good mood. You, no, not today. But you know, uh, stiff arm them. You know, it's like we're out. And uh, emotional emotional intelligence is key, man. You know, because yeah. you can't let other people make you feel any type of way. It's easier said than actually done, right? Actually doing the it. Struggle's real, um, but that's the that's a process we got to aim for. Absolutely. I do think that emotional intelligence is key as leader to, you know, to always have self-awareness of the way you feel. And there's certain things that are already subconsciously in us, you know, so it's hard to get those removed. But but we're in control, you know, because I used to have a big temper before I used to get upset very quickly. You know, I used to be the guy that if somebody will come and talk to me uh, in a way that I didn't like, I would go crazy. So I had to learn how to be a better uh, person because that wasn't taking me anywhere. You know, um, uh, it was just uh, something that I had to really fix within myself. Yeah. If it's uh, what's that five by five rule? If it doesn't doesn't matter five years from now, don't spend more than five minutes on it or something like that. Um, yeah. If it if it if it won't matter in five years, yeah, you don't know, don't spend five minutes on I, it. Uh, Something like that, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I'm excited about what we're doing with you. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you're telling me you're doing great in real estate, and now yeah, with so, our partnership with Initiate Solar, uh, we're excited to start helping your clients, man. It just makes sense for me. You know, I always look at how I can add value. So, obviously, we sell houses, and that's great, and we help people. But how can I further help people? In this time where, you know, gasoline prices are through the roof, uh, if you got home heating oil through the roof, you know, um, everything, everything's through the roof, food's through the roof, everything's, you know, so how can we, how can I help my friends and clients uh, save some money? Like what's out there that's better? And also I said, obviously, I'm an outdoors person. I ride my bike outside all the time. You know, I, I wouldn't say I'm a tree hugger, but you know, I, I care about the environment. If we can, you know, <laughs> you know and I like uh, energy independence is big to me too. I mean, us yeah. having to rely on other countries for energy. Is why we have all these wars. If we didn't have to rely on each other you know, countries for energy, we wouldn't have all these wars Absolutely. and all this stuff that goes on. So every house that becomes solar, every building that becomes solar is less reliant on the grid, less reliant on fossil fuels and stuff like that. And I uh, agree. You know, that there's an opportunity here. So why not? Big you know, opportunity. You know, so and, and, and let's go back to the fact that you don't like the trees, but you like the green. So there's good money <laughs> in solar, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really good money in solar, too, for people that wants to actually participate in the movement. And um, but, you know, you, you, you told me, hey, come and share the story here. So we we talk about the fact that, you know, how I got here. You know, once I got here, what happened next is even more crazy, you know. So, yeah, so um, how'd you get into you're solar? Okay like, with well, me yeah, telling let's, let's do it. You basically how I got in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's the next step. Um, so you were here. Yeah, the next you step. You went to school. Yeah, so and uh, now I got you're in here, solar. Went to school, went to college, dropped out of college, like around 21. I'm like, man, like these people are teaching me like education that's never going to get me to 100,000. They only make seventy five thousand. How can I make more than they and then what they it's make? So true. You, you so know, true. like what doesn't make college, any sense. It's like, why are they teaching us? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I I left and then I started going into self development really hard, reading Out Within the Devil, Think and Grow Rich, all these books that you can think of, you know. And then I got the opportunity to start, uh, you know, a new opportunity of entrepreneurship, and I started doing advertising for a company, business to business, and um, pretty much. This company showed me all the things that I needed to become an advertiser, you know, and I, I was teaching you some of those things. You were like, yeah, wow, that's pretty yeah. good. I love it. You yeah. know, so I hated the product I was selling at the time. So when you're getting in sales, always make sure to find a product that you like. At the beginning, you're going to have to do things that you don't like in order to find what you like. So that's what I did. And since I'm not a quitter, you know, I committed to do the work for six months. I only made about $4,000 selling makeup in the street but the knowledge that I made 
uh, that I went through, all the knowledge I got has allowed me to build what I have today. So I, I would be absolutely nothing without that experience that was teaching me for the next thing, which is uh, the solar industry. So one time I went to Fort Knox to sell makeup in this military base. I'm selling makeup there. And that day was the final day that I had the decision to make whether I was going to be someone that didn't know how to sell this product or I was actually somebody that was going to master this product. And then I realized one thing and it was all about actually being myself. So I stopped caring about the product so much. I started being myself more, started connecting with people, building the rapport. And I saw more bags of makeup than everybody that day. I made the most money. And my manager at the time got mad at me for being the top person that day. You know, <laughs> So when I was heading back, uh, I got fired. So they, they were like, hey, you're going to be uh, fired. You know, we're going to fire you because you were too aggressive and the people didn't like how aggressive you were when you were selling. <laughs> so I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I got to my house Friday night. I'm sitting down in front of the computer. I'm asking God to provide me a job that doesn't feel like work, that I can make a lot of money and I can have a lot of fun. And I say exactly what I just said right now. And then I see a Craigslist ad says, Solar, come and join the company that's going to help you make $20,000. I'm like, man, that's the only thing that can save me right now because I have three months of rent that I haven't been able to pay. I barely have any money in my pocket. I only have $20, literally 20 bucks in my pocket. What else can I lose? Like, I have nothing to lose. Let me go see what's up. So I went to the interview. I liked what I saw. And I realized immediately that environment is everything. That's why I'm part of Apex Executive, because I realized that environment is everything. So I put myself in the right position, in the right place. I saw these people making $5,000, seeing is believing. So I was able to see that somebody else was able to do that type of money. I can too. So I went the first week, knocked a few doors, make three grand the first week. Next week, went again, make seven grand. And next week, another 10. I ended up with 20000 for the month. I made the 20000 that they say I was oh, going to make. Nice. That doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, yeah. Why I believe it happened is because previously six months before, I was putting the work. I was yeah. literally going after something that didn't pay me. But later in the future, life has something in, 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 in for me. And I was able to make that money, you know, and I haven't looked back ever since. You know, I made the 20K that took me to millions, you know, and I'm excited now to continue doing this for others. I want to help more people get to that six figure, you know. And even once I got into the solar industry, I had other struggles after that. You know, like I struggled for almost three to four years because I didn't have financial literacy. I didn't know how to manage money. I would blow up my money as quickly as I made it. So I had the habit of making 20000 I'll think I'm rich and I'll go spend it all. And then I'm going back to be broke. Yeah. So I was never able to build a foundation. It took me a long time to really understand how to build a foundation. And then my fifth year of doing it, like fourth or fifth year, when I went to the MDM in 2019, is when everything changed for me. I, in 2019, at the MDM, I literally had less than a, less than a thousand bucks in my pocket at the time. You know, oh. I was that broke. And I went there with the right mindset. I asked people, how can I start a team? Like, what, what do I need to do? And they pretty much told me, this is what you need to do. A speed of implementation, I took action quickly. And now fast forward 2022, we have an organization of over 85 people with my call center included, 50 people working for the call center and about 35 sales partners that are right now on the platform. You know, so it's Amazing. literally was in 2019 that I, I went after this. And what helped me so much was being in communities like this, knowing people like you that believe in me as much as I believe in you. And that's really what helped me so much, you know, get to where I am today. So. Obviously, I put the work, you know, but being part of this community has impacted my life so much that I continue to give back. Um, now, I'm one of the sponsors for Apex, for the MDM. So, so awesome. if it happened for me, so it awesome. can happen for you, too. That's you know, awesome. it can happen for anybody here. We just got to commit to do the work like we talk about in this program. We do the work despite, you know, and we represent what winning looks like at all time. And that's what we do. You know, Apex so is, is a lifestyle. It's different. Yeah. You gotta when when stuff hits you in life, you gotta figure out why it's hitting you, and you gotta learn from it, and pivot. It was just, you know, when this stuff hits you, you gotta pivot. You gotta realize what it's teaching you, and learn take the lessons and learn them, and use them going forward. Um, I think a lot of people when when life hits them, they give up, and they throw in a towel and say, "Why me?" And instead, you take it and run with it. You know, you grab the ball and you drop it a couple of times, but you get to pick it up. You learn how to pick it up, and you learn how to.
get to the uh, end zone with it, and it's uh, obviously you're doing that, which is, I mean, just proof that you came here with nothing, right? And here you are running 85 people company, and you know, I mean, just just being an executive alone is sixty thousand dollars a year just to belong to the group. Those of you that aren't in Apex, so um, he's a big dog in the Apex world. So, uh, and um, we had met. I don't know, was MDM maybe last year? Apex Live. Year? Was it live I met you? I think Apex Live Apex was, Live, yeah. yeah. I joined an MDM yeah. last year, so it's just just about a year now. And uh, we had met. Apex we Live talking. or Apex MDM. One of them we were talking. I, I, mean, I first met you, we were up, I don't know, one of them, I think it was in a hotel or whatever at the bar, and I got introduced to you. And uh, Maybe. You maybe. know what it is? that Something you said that is key is when people ask for strength, and I believe this is something that Ryan said or someone in the Apex group said is, God is going to give you problems because you're asking for strength. So how do you expect to be someone that has uh, more strength if you don't go through this problem, this adversity that's temporary, right? Pain is and important. If you don't have pain, you don't go, grow, right? If you're comfortable, you're not going to get out of it. If you're in pain, you're going to try and get out of the pain. So the pain like is going there. to the gym. Yeah. It, it you hurts. don't see results unless yeah. you go work out. Yeah. That muscle, right? Yeah, Same yeah. thing with the mind and yeah. with the with the brain. No pain is part of the process, you know. Without pain, you'd, you'd be comfortable. You'd be comfortable sleeping on the couch all day without, you know. But then you get the pain of being broke. So then, you know, you got to go, go some more pain and get further along and keep going down that road, you know, and try and keep escaping the pain by growing. I don't I think your internet or my internet was messing up they there. Jammed up a little bit, but um, but yeah, no, there's a uh, the pain is pain is there to make us grow. It's it's part of the process. I mean, we got to realize that, and not not give up. I mean. We talk about all the time, you know, it's uh, uh, choose your heart, right? So being broke is hard. Getting uncomfortable and going out and selling is hard, right? You know, which be, one are you going to choose? Being overweight and sick is hard and going to the gym is hard. You know, choose your heart, right? So uh, if you really break it down like that, you know, which which heart are we choosing? Do we want to choose a heart that's going to have an it's end gonna result? It's going to help me grow. Yeah, we're going to choose a heart that's going to keep me, you know, keep me down. And it's really, yeah. it's, it's conscious decisions that we got. It's really just getting intentional with our constant, you know, conscious decisions that we make and not going through the we, motions. We got to do is never give up and always show up, bro. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I always carry that. You know, you see that? Never, never give oh, up. That's awesome. Show up and never give up. It's like every time, it's like an anchor for me. You know, I look at it and it's like, oh, show up, never give up. I like oh, I don't feel like joining the call. It's too late. Show up and never give up. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like we're humans. Sometimes we don't feel like doing the work, but that's the time that we got to put ourselves to do the work, you know, consistency over everything, you know, and one day at a time, just keep doing the work. That's that's one thing that I will tell everybody here. Doing the work is the best thing you can do. And doing the work doesn't mean only work on finances, right? Like that's the first start of everything. You got to work on so many other things. You work on your you know, brain, you work, work on, on your body, your work on everything. Yeah. Brain, emotion, mentally. You can make all the money in the world, but if you still feel you're poor, you're poor. No, you can be the person that has the less money in the world, but if you feel you're rich, you're somewhat you're rich. You know, I always felt wealthy. I always felt rich before having any dollar. I don't personally like to define my worth by any amount of dollar because money can buy me. That's why I left, you know, the education system. That's why I decided to not go that route because fifteen dollar an hour. And for anybody that, that makes that much money, you know, uh, it's cool. I'm not, I'm not discrediting that, but it, it was just not for me. Mm. You know, I just have uh, bigger desires and different reality that I wanted to, to live for myself and for my family, you know. It's the so. multiplier, right? So if you're a good person and you, you do good things, the more money you have, the more you can help people, the more you can fund projects, the more you can, you know, you're, you're giving 85 people money because of you. 85 people are making money because... Of something you put in place and obviously the more money you make the more you're going to reinvest the more people are going to make money from you and it, it keeps growing and fire starts fire my favorite my favorite word right fire start fire right when and we're fire not stopping starts, there you know okay. we're not stopping here man yeah. we're, we're, my goal i told you in five to ten years for my call center is ten thousand people I, I, I would like to be and I, I feel we're going to be one of the top largest call center in the whole world bro like yeah so let's let's talk about that um so you started a call center I, obviously i guess it started because of the solar in order to market the solar right it's the original why it started yeah yeah so that 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 that's funny how it started because it started because of pain you know yeah, the, pain. the pain of making too many phone calls and and always being tied up to the phone 
and having to call people and literally driving at the same time and I'm calling yeah. oh, the yeah. leads, Welcome you know, because you got to call them in five minutes and then I'm assigning the sales reps. So I was like, man, there's got to be a better way to 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 do this, right? And that's when, um, you know, I met this guy that introduced me to this guy and then, you know, I ended up going to Colombia. Like one of the things that I trust the most is my gut feeling, mm -hmm. my intuition, oh, yeah. my best friend. You know, and my intuition was, was like, hey, go to Colombia, it's 2019, you know, uh, go now, go now in December, uh, like December 6th. So I went to Colombia with my dad from El Salvador. My dad, you know, he had uh, almost 26 years, 25 years of not taking a flight, you cool. know, so so he took a flight with me, you know, we, we went to Colombia together. And he was there to see the whole process of what, what I was building there. He was helping me with the computers, setting up everything. Awesome. We bought a table. We bought six, six computers, headsets. You know, within a week, we have the whole thing set up. There was a lot of back and forth with the negotiations that I was doing with the guy that I was building this. I was very naive at the beginning, you know, like I went over there with this thing. I'm like, I'm like hey, man, I'm going to give you 70% of the business and I'll take 30. And my dad looked at me like, like the fuck crazy. are you doing? <laughs> you know, are you crazy? Well, like, you're the one bringing the money. You're the one bringing everything. And you're like going crazy there. So then I had to go in my world. <laughs> At that time, I had to go in my world. I'm like, hey, bro, listen, like, it's not going to work out. Like, you know, I, I think we had nothing signed at the moment. So, yeah. you know, I'm like, let's just do it like this. So I was able to arrange them, put the whole thing together. First week, we sell 10 deals. That was the first week that I didn't have to be involved in any sale for That's that awesome. to happen. That's when I knew we were up to something. You know, next month, uh, we did 25. The next month, uh, COVID hits, right? January 20, uh, February 20th, like February, March, around that time, COVID happens. Yeah. And I'm in Massachusetts at the time. You know, uh, I'm, I'm watching the news, which I don't watch all the time. But at the time, I was watching to see what was going on. And then I see Grant Cardone saying, they're going to shut the whole, every state, and nobody's going to be able to cross to the other states anymore. So I'm like, holy fuck. It was like 1 a.m. in the morning. I get an anxiety attack. I grab all my shit. I took <laughs> everything from the house that I was living. And I drove four hours straight back to my mom's house to see my wife. At the time, she was my girlfriend. I was really afraid that I wasn't able to come back again for who knows how long. So yeah, I literally was yeah. with Roberto on the phone that whole that whole ride. Literally, I'm talking to him so he can keep me going because it's like three hours of driving. I almost falling asleep. You know, like he's like, bro, like keep me, keep me going, bro. Cause like literally four or five in the morning, I'm almost there and I made it back home, you know, cause I, I got that, that much anxiety to uh, not being able to go back and see my wife and, and my mother at the time. My, my wife wasn't my wife, you know? Yeah. So at the time we were like, what are we going to do? Because we were doing in-home presentations. Like, what are we going to do now? And it's like, you know what? Maybe we should start to do it over the phone. Like we should, we should go and, and try to do this virtually. And that's when we start selling virtually. So that month we did like nine. The next month we did like another 20 again and 25 again and then 40, you know, and we haven't looked back ever since, you know. Awesome. And uh, we were always wondering how can we sell over the phone because we were knocking doors all the time. I knocked doors for more than three, four years in my whole career, you know, being in solar. I, I was a door knocker. I was out there knocking doors consistently every single day, you know. Uh, now, now my job is different. Now my job is not to sell homeowners. Now my job is to sell sales partners, to sell the vision yep. that we have exactly. with Initiate Solar and the other people, bring more leaders, make sure that everybody get an opportunity here to grow within the company. You know, we're a driven uh, company by impact, you know, impact driven company. That's what we do. You know, we want to do an impact. We have core values um, and, and my core values for my company is the same thing for my call center. You know, we, yep. do, we have action, connection to serve people and a student mentality. Action, we do the work with Spike, just like Apex. You know, connections, we connect with people intentionally. To serve people, we serve people with integrity. And a student mentality, we're always learning and mm. we implement quick. we always learning and we implement quick, you know. And then our mission statement is we uh, accelerate the growth of renewable energy one house at a time. That's it. And then with the call center, our, our mission statement is we're a client acquisition company that help other companies, you know, so we help other companies acquire clients. And looking back at everything I've done, I think my background 
is beyond solar. I know that for a fact and beyond the call center. I am a client acquisition expert. I know how to acquire clients. I know how to break down sales process. I know how to think about doing different things when it comes to a marketing campaign, you know, and, and that's really what I've been specializing, uh, doing business to business, door to door, over the phone, digital, you know, so I pretty much have done a few different things here. I mean, so I'm pretty excited about that. Any business is, comes down to leads, whether it be real estate, whether it be solar, whether it be any air conditioning, you know, you know what, the other thing I do, if you don't have leads, you don't have clients and customers, you know, what good are you? So no matter what the business is, if you're good at, you know, connecting with people and meeting new people and connecting, you know, and getting customers, um, you know, there's a there's hundred, you know, realtors and thousands of realtors out there. There's probably hundreds of thousands of uh Solar people out there, there's 100,000 air conditioning people out there. The ones that are able to connect, I mean, yeah, some are better than others, and obviously there's, there's that part of it, but there's a lot of decent companies out there. But the ones that can connect and actually serve their client, you know, meet their client and serve their client are the ones that are going to win. So with the call center, I mean, that's that's genius. That's You got that down. It really doesn't matter what industry it is. It's really just connecting with people and, and showing yeah. them. You know, it's, you see, it's the same yeah, absolutely. for whatever it is, right? I mean, what other, um, you're doing stuff other than solar at the call center, right? What other kind of uh, businesses? Yeah, we do, um, we do MBA, it's like motor vehicle registration, you know, um, MBA. Uh, we do uh, insurance, Medicare, business loans, uh, okay. home restoration, you know, like calling areas that have been hit with hail damage or with uh, hurricane damage, you know. Uh, we, we are specialized in light transfers. Uh, the good thing about having a call center is we do the heavy work. It's kind of like knocking the doors. You know, yep. if you're a door knocker and you're knocking the door, you have an appointment setter knocking the door and you just go and close. We do the same thing with the call center. We, a client, we, we acquire clients. We set the light transfer or we set the appointment. And whoever is the expert, they close the deal. Simple as that. We put you literally in front of you to go and kick the, 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 the ball and, and make the goal. You know, no, it can't get any more simple than that. You know, that's yeah. why the name of my company is Initiate Marketing, you know, and uh, we are basically working with Bliss Companies, which is my company in Colombia. You know, um, so with Initiate, I'm doing more things than solar. I'm doing Initiate Solar, Initiate Marketing. Uh, the goal is to build a bigger brand uh, that I can incorporate other other companies uh, within me, you know, and what I'm looking to build. And this is something that uh, one of my partners, you know, we talk about all the time. It's about how do we go to that next level? How do we put something together where we bring all the people in other industries and we can take this to bigger levels, you know? So we've been talking about that vision and we're talking about it even more and more because everything starts by you talking about it, putting it together and then, you know, come to reality. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing you know, what you built there. And, uh, and I know it's going to keep growing. Just, you just, you don't have to something, you don't have to some gold there. Um, the, every business is down to lead generation and connecting the clients. And once you, once you master that, you can, you can master anything really. Um, it's the biggest problem that I have with my team of agents, you know, how to connect to new clients, you know, new people that want to sell their house, new people that want to buy houses. And there's so many different ways. And, you know, you got the, from the door knocking down to Facebook ads down to, you know, lists and all kinds of other stuff that's out there. And, um, you know, basically once you find something that works and you have proven results, rinse and repeat, right? So you've got that figured out. And, uh, glad to be part of that, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we're glad to have you, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's, you uh, know, that's down, yeah. So, you're a go-getter, go-getter, yeah. action taker. Yeah, that's what we do. We do what we do, right? You know, um, just doing the work and, and just making things happen and connecting and, and just, just keep going. Just keep going, right? Every day we keep going. So, and then... Uh, that's right. My message today right today was uh, 350 of the ride, and message today I was talking about I was riding down by the beach and a bunch of people were fishing, right? And I said life is a lot about fishing, right? You're fishing for clients, right? And the better yep. the better the better bait you use, the better lure you use, um, and it's it's, it's the, just a numbers game. It's a numbers game, right? So the more hooks you put that's in the water, right. the more fish you're gonna catch. But I said make sure you're putting your hooks in the right pond, and that's you the gotta end. have the right attitude, yeah. though. Right. But you can be that guy that goes and try to catch a fish and you'll be mad. You probably won't catch anything. Yeah. You can be the guy that does not catch a fish for five days in a row and the sixth day you go, you do ten. Yeah. You know, yeah. all because you had a great attitude. 
Yeah. All you heard. needed was one day to at least grab something. That's yeah. the way I look at it when it yeah. comes to sales. You know, I yeah. can go one week with nothing and then boom. Yeah. I was experiencing the, the low average is what I call selling call center services to a few people. I was having a lot of presentations, but now nobody buying. Mm. But I'm like, you know what? I know if I keep going and I have a great attitude, I'm going to pop the cherry. Like somebody, somebody's going to say yes. And mm. then boom, 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 left and right, more than seven people say yes, you know? So yeah, yeah. I just got to keep that great attitude, very simple presentation, and, and the work ethic is your best friend. So for yeah. anybody that yeah. like to know where to find me, you know, uh, I'm in Instagram, Solar King, uh, Solar King, Solar K and G. And uh, I believe I'm also tag here, uh, yep, Eric here. Sanchez. Yep. Anything that I can do to help, you know, it'd be uh, my pleasure to help you. If I can help you, if I can, I'll tell you I can. You know, if you like to, you stay connected and follow my journey. The process is everything. Trust the journey. It's uh, a book that I'm writing that's coming on uh, very soon. And I'm also be launching my own podcast too. So, you know, follow awesome. me, stay tuned. And, uh, awesome. Brian, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate yeah, man. Thank you, you for coming on. Here. I know you got a hard stop, so uh, we'll get you out of here. I appreciate you coming on. I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, for anyone that has any solar questions, uh, reach out to me. We'll connect you to Eric. Um, it's really a simple process. Get a bill, and basically uh, we see if uh, we can save you some money. Um, it's really simple, that simple, yeah. Like send the bill. I'll give you access to a system where you put your leads, follow-up, text message, yeah. all for free, just for joining in our platform. And we'd love to tell you more about what we got going with the solar opportunity and also with the other things that we're doing with the call center and, and the roofing too as well. So, you know, thanks for having me, Brian. I really stuff. appreciate you. Appreciate and you I look on. forward to see you tomorrow Definitely. at the event. Yes, tomorrow night, uh, 317 Main, 317 Main, 14 Main? I don't know. Farmingdale, uh, Jessica Dennehy's event, uh, Long Island Empowerment event. Eric is going to be there. I'm going to be there. A bunch of us are going to be there. Reach out to us. Um, I think there's still room to get in. I know uh, she had a couple seats left for a free event. Come down at 7 to 9 tomorrow in Farmingdale. So come hang out with us, and we'll talk a little bit more. Appreciate you, Eric, for coming on. Um, it's a blessing to have you uh, into my life, and uh, uh, looking forward to working with you. Thank you for all the knowledge you've shared. And uh, if anyone needs anything, reach out to Eric, me, and we're happy to help you guys. Hi, right, everyone. Have a good night. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you hopefully tomorrow over in Farmingdale for local Islanders. And if not, next Monday, we'll see you back here live, 8.30 p.m. All right, everyone. Let's Have go. a great night.